Have you thought about using video to grow your business or repurposing content into short videos for social media? Hi, this is Nitin Agarwal, Associate Executive Director, Ty Delincia, along with Victory.ai. Welcome you to our webinar where we discuss how to scale your business on social media by discovering what video is best for you, podcasting, webinars, live shows, etc. Leveraging your time, money, and effort to yield the best results. Repurpose text and video content into short videos. To take us through the session, we have very two amazing speakers. It gives me great pleasure in introducing Vikram Chalana, co-founder and CEO of Victory.ai. He's an engineer turned serial entrepreneur based in Seattle, USA. He's currently building Victory.ai with the aim of democratizing short videos. Prior to this, he was a co-founder of WinShuttle, an enterprise software company focused on democratizing SAP data management, which he built and scaled to 300 employees globally. He studied at IIT Kanpur and University of Washington, Seattle. Along with him, we also have with us Pete Bennett. He's a YouTube creator and a consultant based in London, UK, who runs multiple YouTube channels with over 140 million views. Since leaving the corporate world of Exxon and O2, he's built and sold one seven-figure and one six-figure company using online marketing and automation strategies. Pete holds a degree in computer science from University of Bradford. He's a Pictory customer and also advises Pictory as a creator economy champion. Without much ado, I hand over the stage to Vikram to take it forward. Vikram, it's all yours. We look forward to the session. Great. Thank you for the wonderful intro, Nathan. Uh, and it's uh, it's really lovely to be here. Uh, it's really exciting. Um, the uh, what I wanted to briefly talk about why we got started with Pictory and uh, and then and then we'll ask Pete some questions uh, about uh, about his uh, uh, his experience and how that can be helpful to the audience here. Um, so uh, while I was at Wind Shuttle, one of the things I, I realized is that um, um, I was uh, creating a lot of content. Um, I was creating tons of content for the uh, uh, long form content things like white papers and podcasts and uh, uh, and webinars and what I realized is that not many people were watching that um, in the beginning we had a lot of people in about 10 years ago that long form content used to get a lot of traction and uh, over time what we found is that that it's everybody was preferring short videos but as soon as I, as a product manager, as an entrepreneur, as a CTO, uh, wanted to do short videos or figure out how to edit videos or how to create videos. I got lost. I needed to find my creative team. The I, I used to call them people with capes and long hair, and uh, I needed to call. I needed to find them, and and I could not always find them easily. And uh, and so it was it was a challenge. I couldn't do videos on my own. So so we. We started Pick3 with the goal of enabling anyone to create videos or edit videos. And, uh, and that's been kind of the, the mission for the last uh, two years that we started this company. And, um, um, and I'll talk about kind of all the types of videos and all that stuff that, uh, uh, that we've learned about. But, but first, um, um, Pete is a customer of, of, uh, of Pick3 as well as, uh, uh, as Nitin introduced, he's, he's been, a creator in the in the true sense of the word uh, he's, he's he has multiple youtube channels with millions of, of viewers and and so on so i think we can get his perspective first and then i'll talk about uh, my perspective about about videos so pete um as uh, most of the people here are business owners uh, uh they're uh, parts of small to mid-sized businesses and uh, how should a business think about video and video marketing okay you know? well that's really it's a really good question um, and before i answer that directly let's just go back over the history of video for a few years because um only a few years ago um to create videos which were useful in a business sense in other words they contain valuable information and the production values were uh, something which was acceptable in the corporate world or in the business world you needed significant investment in both training 
and equipment. When I had uh, my translation company, for instance, which is one of the ones that I built and sold, um, I spent, I was trying to, before we came on, tot up a few numbers. I think it was of the order of fifty to $60,000 building uh, a studio so that I could make videos, so that I could speak in much the same way that we're talking now with a, a background. That, that isn't, um, that's just a green screen. Uh, but to do that kind of stuff where you had a professional quality video with a green screen and with reasonable production values, you know, you, you were talking tens of thousands of dollars. Um, but I did it. I was fairly early into video um, in order to do two things. One is to build the all important know, like and trust relationship that you have with your prospects, potential clients. Um, and secondly, to give you a platform to answer questions, position yourself as an expert and get an authority position by sharing your knowledge as opposed to selling to people. So here's how we did it with the translation company and how many businesses uh, I, I believe um, should be doing more of. Two types of video. There is the video which is longer form, so maybe five minutes or so where you're explaining a subject uh, in depth and by doing so, positioning yourself as someone who you know they should be working with because you clearly know your stuff. And secondly, shorter videos. You mentioned shorter videos. Now, shorter videos are very hot at the moment for two reasons. One is uh, TikTok. Um, okay, you may say that that's not for business. Well, it's, it's not yet, but uh, people said that about YouTube and YouTube is clearly now becoming more and more mainstream. And the second one is there is YouTube's answer to TikTok, which is YouTube shorts. So videos less than 60 seconds answering a specific question so um i don't know let, let's say you're a dentist and people don't know what's involved in say root canal um, treatment if you're a dentist and you produce short videos which answer you know what is it like to have root canal surgery or you know what should i expect in terms of recovery from root canal surgery produce videos which position yourself as an expert uh, and post them to the socials, but also post them on your website, um, you'll certainly reach more prospects because it will help you with the search algorithms without getting too technical, but also it takes you out of the commodity market. So the moment that you're looking into someone's eyes, as I'm doing now, you're not talking to a generic YouTube expert, you're talking to me and you will feel closer to me because we've made that connection by video. There's no other way that you can do that that I'm aware of, not yet, anyway. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so thought leadership videos is what, is, thought leadership is what videos can, can help promote, uh, whether it's longer form or short form in both cases. Yeah, and the, um, and the key thing now is you don't need those tens of thousands of dollars in order to be able to do that, thanks you know, to services like yours. So my next question was going to be uh, similar to this is uh, what kind of videos work best like podcast live webinars headless videos and I think you already answered that in in most cases people want to see my face talking right they want to see the uh, the the thought expert yeah I think it's a mix really as I say that there's thought leadership so the longer form where it's it's you as the personality and you as the expert but then supplement that with shorter videos, which can be faceless. I mean, I've done lots of these um, where you effectively ask a question and then answer a question within the video. And it's amazing if you're uh, reasonably adept at script writing, just how much valuable information you can convey in less than a minute um, using a, you know, a, a well-written video script. Great. And I mean, you, you are, you're the master of repurposing. You've told me about kind of different places you use these uh, different ways you use AI to make videos. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, so you have a content piece that, that you, you have some ideas on. Uh, do you write a blog about it? Do you, what, what else can you do about with it? Yeah, well, that, that's the great thing nowadays, isn't it? That you can um, get one piece of work, one piece of content out to multiple channels. Um, but let's go back and say, how do we produce the content? Now, I'm reasonably knowledgeable about most of the areas that I would write on. 
But if you are struggling with the blank piece of paper, a lot of people say that they get writer's block. And there are lots of tools out there. I don't know whether we're allowed to mention them. I, I will if you like. Um, that can supplement your um, writing capability using artificial intelligence. So, um, for instance, if I was to try and write an article about root canal surgery, I know nothing about that subject, but I can use artificial intelligence to help me research that subject, begin writing an article with it. Um, but then I would also obviously get that checked by an expert, um, somebody else in my company before putting that out into the, into the internet. But the methods to do it would be to use a blog. Obviously, that's great because it's content on your website. Make a video of um, either yourself or one of the AI solutions such as uh, Pictory offers, um, reading either the whole blog or a condensed summary of the blog and make that into a video, post that on your website as well with burnt in subtitles, because often people will choose to watch a video, even if it contains the same information, than read a blog. Um, I mean, lots of people on the internet sort of selling uh, writing a book as being a good way of advertising your business. But I always say to them, when was the last time you watched a video? When was the last time you read a book? Most people will have watched a video that day. Many people now don't bother reading books. They go straight to video. Um, so on your website, obviously, um, and then we've got the social media. So all of the, the, the Instagrams, the, the Facebooks, more and more TikTok, obviously not yet. That's more aimed at the lower um, age groups, but, it, you know, gray hairs will migrate there eventually um, and get the same information out in different formats um, and across different channels. And there are many tools that can do that, obviously. Awesome. So some of the some of the format some of the formats could be not just blog or video, but you could also create a podcast out of it. I know you're great at using some of the AI based uh, text to speech tools uh, to create podcasts automatically. Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. It's about putting the content in a place where people prefer to consume it. So be everywhere if you can. And again, there are plenty of tools that can help you do that. So you don't have to rework uh, the same thing over and over again. Fantastic. Um, thank you for that, Pete. That was that was super useful information. I, I, even for me, I learned something. I, I talked to you so many times before, but I, I learned a bunch of things as well. So thank you so much. And um, I will take uh, now a few minutes and go through my my presentation. And uh, and I P Pete already kind of started about talking about different kinds of videos. So I'll actually start there, uh, and uh, and I will share my screen in a, in a second. As soon as I figure this out. So give me one second, I'm sharing my screen here. Um, so the way I see the types of videos are we got homepage videos. Um, and I the, the reason I distinguish between homepage videos and other website videos are these are, I think of it as high value videos where you probably want to invest a lot of time and effort in making nice videos. Product launch video is a similar thing um, where you want to hire a production company and 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 do that. Um, and and then as Pete mentioned, thought leadership videos, right? Webinars, short uh, podcasts, and and uh, even even uh, five minute long um, topic videos that 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 position you as a thought expert. Um, then I see video ads, uh, like sh really short you know, 30 second, 20 second videos that you'd see on uh, YouTube and, and social media and everywhere. And then videos for organic social media. So I see all kinds of videos that, that are being used these days. So if you scroll on Facebook or, or LinkedIn, um, you see a lot of videos. So these are the kinds of videos that, that we see. And, uh, and I have a quick poll for the audience as to kind of, what kind of videos do you actually create today or use today? Um, and I see a lot of people use webinars already. So, uh, Nathan, if you guys can share the, the, the poll, the first poll. So 
So yeah, we can close the poll now and, and uh, maybe towards the end we can review the results or if you have the results already, we can, uh, can we see those now? Great. Um, so people are already using social media videos, people are already using um, some thought leadership videos, um, video ads are going to be big. So let me, um, let me also put things in a, in a different way. This is actually a really encouraging number because that, that social media videos is what I was going to talk more about today. So, so hopefully you'll get some, uh, some tips about, about that from, from this talk today. Um, I, um, I put videos in two axes here. I say, you know, videos which have a high production quality. So you can have videos that 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 you use a lot of resources for, and, and that's my vertical axis, the high fidelity or high production quality. And the horizontal axis is the frequency, how often you create these videos. So um, obviously the holy grail is high production va value videos produced at high frequency. Um, and that is like if you're a studio, you're probably doing that all the time. Uh, but for most uh, other businesses, it's hard to be on this top right quadrant. But there are some nice tools that we, when we talk about repurposing, um, you can take some high production value videos that you create, like these TV ads or, or homepage videos or product launch videos that you may not create at, at very high frequency, but you can take snippets of it and post them on social media at, at high frequency. And, and so you can do some of that, some of this high frequency work with, with repurposing the existing, existing videos. Um, obviously, if it's low production quality and low frequency, you don't even bother. So that's, that's that my bottom left quadrant. But this is the one that, I, I, that we were focusing on today is um, high frequency videos that, that may or may not have a very high production quality, but so something that you can produce very, very quickly and, and, uh, uh, and easily without a lot of resources. And, uh, and that's, that's how I, I think about these social media videos, these thought leadership videos, is, is something that, that needs to come up fast and uh, in, in the world. So here's what's going on today in, in the social media, in the world at least. You constantly have to post on social media. It's, it's become a, a, a chore, it's become a, an opportunity. It's, it's, uh, it is something that every business has to do to stay relevant. Uh, and, uh, and videos we know grab a lot more attention on social media, but as we've talk, we are talking about, the videos are, are, are harder and cost uh, uh, investment of time and money. Um, but we are, all, we are all sitting on, on most businesses that I see, you've, you've either created content in other forms, uh, in, in terms of webinars or blogs and stuff, that are not leveraged enough for social media. And, uh, and that's what's happening. That's, that's, that's the opportunity here that I want to leave you with is, you know, take content that you have already, or, or if you have to use AI to create some content, create content that, and then repurpose that for, for social media. And that's, uh, that's our, our, how we get to high frequency videos. So here's some key metrics that I learned on social media, uh, for, uh, for, for over the last year that I've been researching this. Um, an average post that you make on social media, on LinkedIn or Facebook, as a business, not as a as an individual uh, a user on, on on Facebook, but a business post reaches only about five percent of your followers. A single post, so it's it's pretty low. It used to be ten percent, and it's got, it's getting closer to five percent. So, so that's a single post is not likely going to be seen by more than four, five percent of your followers. So you just have to constantly do it. That's the lesson from this. You have to you have to stay on top of it all the time. Um, videos will get higher engagement, almost two to twelve x higher engagement. There's lots of research that has been done than just posting a text or or an image. Um, Eighty five percent of the videos will be watched on mute. So whenever you post a video, you want to make sure you put captions in there. Um, that's highly important. And the ideal length, uh, and Pete mentioned less than one minute, and, and that, that's for shorts and TikTok. Uh, f uh, LinkedIn says one to two minutes, Facebook says one to two minutes, 
Um, so, so different channels will have different uh, lengths of ideal video. But as you can see, no more than two minutes is your ideal uh, length of a video um, that, that can get traction. So there's lots of interesting things that this, the, these, this data can tell you. You have to be always posting. You have to put subtitles on your videos. You should put videos and you should put short videos there. Um, so some ideas of uh, repurposing, right? So uh, we've already talked about a few uh, and, and here are some more ideas. Uh, so say you have blogs, right? You can convert blogs to podcasts. You can have AI read it for you or you can have your own, your own voice to, to take that content and convert it to a podcast. Um, you can use the blog script, blog summary as a script for a video. Uh, and, uh, and I'll show you um, some of the tools for that, uh, how we can use Pictory for something like that. Um, you can extract quotes and stats from a blog, use that for social media posts. You can create summaries of the blog, use that for social media. And the idea is don't just post the blog once on, on your LinkedIn channel or your, or your Facebook or, or any of the social channels. Use multiple posts to promote one blog. So don't always be creating new content. Repeat the post for one blog multiple times with different things. Don't just copy the post over, but sometimes use the video, sometimes use a different summary, sometimes use a quote, sometimes use a podcast, but use this opportunity to take a single blog and, and promote it multiple ways um, on, your, on your social channels. Um, same thing if you have a webinar um, that, that you've recorded, you can transcribe the webinar, convert it to a blog, you can take the audio part of the webinar, create a podcast out of it, you can create a slide deck from a, uh, from a, from a webinar. Uh, and then the, one of the most powerful things that we've realized is you can break, break the webinar up into bite-sized segments and, and post these bite-sized segments. So this, this can help you get these, you know, the one to two minute long videos from say a webinar could, it could be 30 minutes long, 40 minutes long. You can take one to two minute segments out of it where something interesting was said and, uh, and create many segments from one 30 minute webinar. And, and schedule that to post. So again, I'll show you um, how you can use uh, some of the tools um, that, that we're building uh, to, um, to do this, uh, to do this easily. So this, uh, there's tons of options, tons of, uh, I, I mean, Pete was hesitant in mentioning uh, uh, vendor names, but I said, you know, hey, there's tons of tools for different things. I'll, I'll show Pictory, but, but there's tools for summarization there is tools for you know uh, stock visuals if you're going to post on on uh, um, on social there are all these tools for creating visuals canva i'm sure many of you use there's tools for scheduling posts like hootsuite and buffer uh, for video content there's tools for transcription uh, for short video making of course there's the the standard tools like iMovie and stuff, and then there are tools for converting podcasts to video. So there's there's tons of tools out there. Um, I wanted to talk about Pictory today and and show you how you can do many of the things we've talked about here uh, using um, using Pictory. But uh, but there there are many options you have. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna bring up a second poll um, that I have about. Uh, um, about repurposing. So if you can bring the second poll up. So you may already be doing some repurposing um, and I'd love to hear what, what you're already doing. All right, so we can close that now and just uh, see what the, what the results are. So looks like most of you are not doing any repurposing. And so, so that's, that's good. So hopefully you can learn things from, from this today's webinar and, and try to do some of these things as well.
Um, but uh, yeah, the multiple posts from webinars looks like you're already doing multiple posts from one blog looks like those two my, were my big recommendations. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, um, that you're doing and some of you are already doing blogs to videos, which is um, which is also great to hear. Um, so, all right, cool. So let me talk a little bit about Pictory. Um, so we've been building this engine, as I mentioned, to, uh, to take your existing content and create short videos from it. Uh, and uh, some of the key uses, use cases of Pictory are, we can take text content and convert them to short videos for social media. Um, we can add, we can help you add captions to your videos. Um, we can help you edit videos um, very easily and I'll show you that scenario as well. And then you can create these highlights or small snippets from a webinar very easily using text. You can, you can, it can help you select these uh, small snippets and, uh, and you can uh, create these uh, for your, for your social um, offerings. So that those are the use cases. And I want to now get into a demo of Pictory and, and spend the next um, five minutes uh, before we start taking Q and A and uh, on a on a quick uh, on a quick demo so this is pictory and um, uh, it's it's a very simple tool which helps anybody create videos so i'll start with a scenario where you might have a webinar to begin with and uh, and you'd have a recording of the webinar an mp4 file so what you would do that is you would drop the webinar file right here the mp4 file right here and, and upload it. And when it's uploading, it actually not just puts the file into the cloud, but it also transcribes it. And in the transcription, you can choose the language. We don't support all the languages, but we support many languages and accents as well. So you can choose the Indian English accent, uh, for example, and you can upload that and that will, that will help, uh, uh, you know, some of the pronunciations in Indian English might be different. So, uh, and, and then it would it would bring up those and what at the end what we get is after the transcription is done what we'll get is something like this we got the we'll get the the webinar transcription here on the right on the left and the and the video you'll be able to see on the right so I can basically now uh, do a few things I, I'm one of the common use cases is just post publishing of a webinar so there's a bunch of stuff that is that's usually going to be in the beginning of the webinar uh, can you hear me now? I, am I audible? Uh, and I can, I can take these and I can just say, delete these from the webinar. So I can simply from the webinar text, I can delete, I can select sections of the text and just delete it. So I deleted the beginning, but I can go into any of the, any part in the middle and say, okay, uh, delete that from the video. So, so that part of the webinar is, basically removed from the video. So you can do this at the word at the sentence level, but you can also do it at the word level. And in fact, we automatically we filter out these words, uh, the filler words, us and ums. So let's hear this one and then we'll uh, remove it and see. I don't spend a lot of time um, with each each person. So I tend to do this a lot. And, and this guest speaker that we had also tend, tend to do this a lot. So I'm going to use this button to remove this filler words from the video. And all the filler words, all the ers and the ums are gone now. And it basically puts a jump cut there instead. So let's listen to this. I don't spend a lot of time with each each person. So so that that's that's one other value of it is that as you are getting ready to post publish a webinar, you can delete some sections in the beginning, some sections at the end, and uh, remove these filler words uh, and get ready to publish this uh, in this. So from, from, here, from this point on, you can simply uh, say, okay, I wanna show the subtitles, uh, that's by default setting here, uh, and you can just generate the video. Um, here's one other thing that, that we do, which is really important for most businesses, is to make sure your, vi your videos are branded. So, so we, we make sure that you can add a logo and and the logo will show up either on the top left or the top right of the video you can add an outro like a call to action at the very end uh, it can be constructed with a logo or it can be something a video that you may already have that you can upload here or, or an image um, and you can also set up your like font and 
uh, color schemes uh, for your business and make sure that the subtitles display up in those uh, in those kind of uh, in those kind of fonts so then when you generate the video uh, it will actually respect that those uh, those brand settings and add the outro add the logo uh, color the subtitles uh, appropriately so that's one one use case of just adding um, captions to your video uh, it also we also let you download SRT files from your video and and and, a, and this in a text format. So so talking about repurposing, you can take that webinar, get the text format of that webinar, create a blog from it. For example, um, SRT is is a subtitle format that YouTube likes, Vimeo likes, most of these uh, formats like the SRT for, uh, for file. So you can upload it there instead of burning the caption in. By default, we're going to burn the caption into the video, but you can you can get the SRT file instead. So now now I want to talk about snippets because that that was high value activity that 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 you can do. So so you can search your video for the most interesting pieces. So so let's say where did he talk about eighty percent? So this is a good interesting sentence. It's really hard to differentiate, get people's trust without referral. So I can take this section and I say this is an interesting one. I want to create a highlight out of it. So I can create multiple highlights. This is one highlight. So this shows me that this is going to be a 33 second video that that I can post. And I can simply if I if I all I did was I wanted this video, I can just generate a video just by selecting that sentence and generate a video. I can do that with any sentence. I can select this one single sentence and generate a video from that. So that will be just like that one sentence, five second video. In this case, if I took this it will be a 33 second video I can add multiple highlights I can do searches I can say okay uh, I want to add this to the highlights too uh, and as a con as the person who's put together the content you're the best person to know what what some of the good highlights will be but you don't have to think about timestamps anymore you don't have to send this to your video editor you can do this yourself because you can just search for the text and you can find the right place uh, where you want to create the highlights. And, uh, and so in this case, now I have three highlights. I can do one of two things. I can generate one video with all these three highlights. If I just generate highlights video, it'll be like the IPL highlights video for the, for the, for the whole webinar. I can generate this one and a half minute, one and one minute, 16 second uh, uh, highlight reel. Or I can say I want actually each one of them to be a separate clip and I can download these individual uh, highlight clips as separate videos. So all I have to do is just select this and download these video clips. So, so that's one, uh, two of the things I wanted to show here, right? You can add captions and you can uh, and post produce the webinar, but also you can create these highlights and download these highlights um, from, the, um, from the video very, very easily, very quickly. The other thing I wanted to show you uh, that we built is um, say you have a blog and you want to create a video from that or even if you don't have a blog you have a text script you can create a video from that so let's go with the blog first so I say publish a blog on medium and uh, and I want to use that to create a video so I just put the URL of the blog in that and uh, and now what what our software does is it it extracts the key messages from the blog. So it's using AI to uh, find the most unique sentences in the blog. And, uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come and it's going to show me that all these highlighted sentences are the ones that it, the AI selected. Now, um, I, some of these I don't want. Like this is just a, a thing here that I can just remove. So I can come very quickly and I can say I, I want this, but I don't want this. Right, so I can very quickly come in and select uh, what sections I want or don't want in the final uh, summary. And so now this is my summary that is going to be used as a script for the video. And I can go to the next step and, uh, and create the video from it. So I, it, it says what kind of video. So I'm going to pick a 16 by 9 video. By the way, different videos are good for different channels. Uh, so 16 by 9 YouTube uh, likes that that format um, and uh, now for every sentence I am uh, the AI here is searching a library of visuals for the best 
fitting visual. So we have we have a big library of several million pieces of videos and images, stock content that that we're looking up. So sometimes this con sometimes the library can sometimes the image can come from the article itself. Like this image was in the article, so I, I can leave it alone. Uh, this one came from uh, the stock visual. Uh, this one also came from the stock visual. So 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 many of them come from the stock visual. Now so if I want something else. Uh, I can uh, I can select something else here. It actually picked out all the other ones that were in my article as well. So I can pick pick those. I can search for uh, for something else. So it, in this case, traction. It actually found like car tire traction. So sometimes it makes errors. So you can you can pick uh, you can pick something else instead. Uh, and I can say okay, this is uh, maybe I can use this. Um, or I can upload my own content. And this is this is actually very important. So Oftentimes, you may have nice pictures or something that you can take and and uh, and upload their uh, uh, either videos or images. You can take screenshots of PowerPoints and upload those. So um, so those are the that's the visual part. So you can you can set up the visuals and once you're happy with all the visuals, then you can go okay. It automatically picks out a music track. So again, we use AI to. Um, to figure out the mood of the article and then we match the mood with the with the mood of a music uh, track and we pick out the music track automatically and then you can put put a machine voice over if you want you can record your own voice uh, and and I prefer that personally my own voice recorded but uh, you can use uh, one of these machine voices and we use the Amazon voices uh, Amazon has a tool called poly and we use their voices here and uh, um, and we can pick that and have that narrated for us. So now let's look at this video. I spent maybe you know two minutes putting this together, right? Uh, I gave it the URL, selected a couple of sentences, maybe made a couple of changes to the visuals, and now teaser videos in video B2B marketing. Vikram Shalana, medium. Too much text content and little traction. Whether you're a product marketer or content strategist. Creating content that engages your customer, or even your own sales representatives, is your number one job. Video is where it is at. Video boosts conversion rates by 80%. Video posts on Facebook get twice the engagement of others. But creating a video is hard. So what's a product marketer to do? What if you could create a video summary of an article, a teaser video, from an article automatically or near automatically? Victory to the rescue. So, very quickly, I created this right, and you can uh, you can do it yourself with any of your blogs. You can also start with a script if you don't want to start with the article and just type the summary here or copy and paste it from from anywhere else and create a video from there. And uh, and so those are some of the use cases I wanted to share. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully, this kind of Give, leaves you something with va of value uh, that that you can take and, and try. Um, we do have a special offer for uh, for the for the attendees at this webinar. So if you do if you do end up deciding, so we have a a free trial that you can sign up from on our website victory.ai. Uh, and if you do decide that you want to use and buy uh, buy any of our plans. Uh, we're offering a 25% uh, discount on any of our plans, annual or monthly, uh, and, and the discount lasts forever. However, the deal only lasts until end of November. Um, so, so that's the code TIE25 uh, for, this, um, for the webinar attendees. Um, so with that, I will stop sharing and we will um, take up any questions uh, that you might have. So, uh, Nitin, we went a little bit over time, but okay, we still have a few minutes. No problem. It was really a wonderful, uh, and we as Ty also saw a real value when we had partnered with you and we had come up with those videos. Never we could think that we could do it all by ourselves. You know, um, we didn't have to wait for anyone else to do it for us. So I don't understand much of technology, but still I could do it. So <laughs> that was the best. Coming to the question, so. The first one is from Sri Chandra Menon. He's asking about what about copyright for pics or videos that are used? Assume risk if any is covered. 
Yeah, so we uh, we license all that content. We license from a, a group called Storyblocks, and uh, and we make it available to you. So you don't, you, and it's all fully licensed and copyright protected. Um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And same thing with the music tracks; they are fully licensed. Okay. The next one is by Bhavna. Uh, is there a golden number of frequency of posts per day or week? Because if unchecked, it can get annoying and counterproductive. Uh, good, good question, Bhavna. I, I, I'll actually let Pete answer that maybe. Well, yeah, and it's, it's a very, very good question because it varies considerably by the niche that you're in. Um, so long as the video is providing new <clears throat> quality and value, then um, in my experience, um, too many is is much less of a problem than too little. But consider what niche you're in. For instance, if you're in the uh, I don't know crypto trading niche, then you probably want to be doing several videos a day because yesterday's news is yesterday's news. If you're in a more evergreen uh, niche, then perhaps you don't need to hit it quite so hard. I mean. Um, you know, many things don't change that much over time, do they? For instance, the classic one in internet marketing terms is dog training. Um, you know, if you did one of those a week and teach your dog a new trick every week, you probably couldn't cope with learning very much more uh, than that in a week anyway. Yeah, I would probably turn off a channel which talks about root canals five times a day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And also, you've got to think about your, um, your time as well. What I normally say with YouTube for instance, is produce content at a rate that you think that you can sustain without either burning out because that's all you're doing and not getting any other work doing or without becoming too repetitive and fatiguing the audience. Great. Uh, the next is by Anupam Kumar, wherein um, I think he would like to know if the video is in English and uh, can we transcribe it to a Hindi and then that's what a person can listen to or vice versa. Is that possible? I think that's what he meant. Uh, so Pictory doesn't have that translation support yet, uh, but uh, but we do support Hindi text. So if you, if you uh, we have some users who basically replace the text manually uh, and that will work for short videos, but we don't, we don't do um, automatic translation yet. We do support Hindi videos. So, so Hindi was one of the supported languages that you can upload videos and transcribe it. Next is by Ranjit Singh. What type of video marketing tools create most impact for a B2B SaaS product? Um, so I'll take it because that's what I'm <laughs> building a B2B SaaS product. But it's basically the same thing that Pete was talking about, these thought leadership pieces, um, th things that are broader in scope than just my product, things that, that talk about the industry as a whole, things that I can show that, that I'm an expert on. Uh, and so, so I, I would say, you know, all of those, the video ads you'll still have to do for Facebook and, and uh, um, LinkedIn and if you want to advertise on those platforms. But uh, for thought leadership pieces, I, I think that's the, that's the main like talking head video where I come on video and record myself every once a week or once a month. Um, if you want to add anything to that, Pete. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I would add the, the Q&A type videos. Um, again, without getting too technical, there are ways of finding out what questions your uh, potential prospects will be asking. Uh, at its most basic form, you know, if you go into Google, you can you can look and see what people are searching for, and then just produce a video that that gives them the answer. You know, it's ever so simple, and the Google algorithm absolutely loves this post the hummingbird update. Um, if you want to really give it some some boost, then um, you want to be using optimization tags from rich media in your HTML and then tagging the video as being a rich media segment. And it's like catnip to, um, to Google. We were beating Wikipedia on popular search terms in my translation agency using that technique alone. Um, and also I think uh, demos are awesome. People love demo videos. So for SaaS products, that's always a compelling thing to just create lots of demos, screen, screen shares. Definitely. Great. Uh, the next one is by Adria Mukherjee. Can we have region specific references 
reference picks and music? Uh, so some of the, uh, it may, the AI may not automatically pick out region specific uh, visuals, but, but the library is big enough that, that you can search and find very specific ones for India or Bengal or, or whatever. So, so we, we, I have done that. Uh, I have to manually do the search and addition in the, in, in the product. But, uh, but of course, if, if all else fails, I always um, can bring my personal collection or from the outside and import it into the, into the victory. Um, next is Sri Chandra Menon. Can I use your AI to get the best points of a blog? Create a video with my face on it and add images, music as necessary. Absolutely. I love that idea. That's actually a really good suggestion. So just use the AI to create the summary and then um, copy the summary over and use, use your own face to narrate it. That's actually the best. Um, S. Sain Gupta would like to know, what are the best practices for SEO optimization of videos? So that's Pete's. Um, it depends on the platform. If you're doing it on your website, then again, to mark it up using schema.org tags as rich media is probably the best thing I could say. If you're doing it for YouTube, then um, that's a whole new sort of can of worms. But uh, the, the simplest thing I could say is make sure that your title of your video includes the keywords that you're targeting because the title is the most important part of any SEO strategy on, uh, on YouTube. Pete, can I ask a related question? Does, uh, do the subtitles, the, if you upload an SRT files, does Google uh, index those? To YouTube, if you do that on YouTube, it certainly does, yeah. Um, you should definitely be doing that. Great. Uh, next is Devesh Agarwal. Uh, what about transcription of mix of Hindi and English? That's a tricky one, uh, Devesh. I mean, the, the um, we've we've tried it. We have some videos uh, that some customers uh, were trying, and it's it's hard. Uh, mul multiple language transcriptions. Um, we don't support that yet, and it's 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 kind of in general uh, a research problem in AI. So uh, Nitin would like to know average monthly cost starter to mature few hundred a month to a few thousand a month. I think he means uh, your package. I think that's what it meant, right, Nitin? Yeah, so in um, uh, our, our pricing, individual pricing is listed on the website uh, and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's less than $100 per user per month. But then if you want to get go, go into the enterprise package, if you have uh, multiple uh, users in your organization that need to use it, uh, our typical enterprise plan would start at about, uh, you know, about four to 5,000 a year. Um, that's kind of the, uh, the starting price where, you, where we bundle a, a group of users, some training, professional services and everything. Um, from process nine, uh, someone would like to know how about whiteboard animation for short video? I think it's it's great. Those though there are some nice tools for whiteboard animation uh, that that you can use. Uh, and uh, I haven't tried it, so I don't know how difficult it is to create. Uh, but I, I, Pete, I don't know if you have some opinion on that or. Yeah, I think that they've kind of. Um unless they're done professionally and therefore expensively, if you do them using the, the standard packages, I mean, the, the Doodly is probably the, the, the best well-known one. Um, they're looking a bit old hat now and it's difficult to retain people's attention because the novelty of the whiteboard has now gone. Um, I don't think you can really beat, if you want the absolute best performance is having your face on it to be really honest, because it's then you rather than, a, a, you know, a, an abstract element that they're connecting with. But if you want to have them done professionally, they are ridiculously expensive. Uh, you can be, you can be talking at more than a hundred dollars per second to get high level whiteboarding done, which is crazy. Great. Um, any other questions, um, audience, just please go ahead, put in the Q and A. We still have a little bit of time left with us. 
and interim uh, Vika, uh, Vikram, if you have any more tips um, to share with the audience, please go ahead. While more questions come in. Um, yeah, so I, uh, the, I'll talk about kind of our own video uh, marketing efforts that we do at Pictory and uh, and we do the same things that we talked about. So I, I do a monthly video webcast that I record uh, with me and a guest and uh, and then uh, it's a it's a video podcast but I don't really like it's not a live stream thing but we record it and then uh, and then we do the we pu publish that on our YouTube channel but we also then create snippets from it uh, using of course um, our own f product and uh, and then have that scheduled on our LinkedIn and and uh, Facebook uh, and we use Hootsuite for that for that scheduling, uh, and we, we schedule it for for a few weeks out. So every webinar we get, you know, maybe a dozen posts out of it, or every every podcast I get a dozen posts out of it. Um, and uh, and then the same thing we do with the blogs. Uh, we we write blogs. We convert each blog to a video, and then we post that um, with with or without the video uh, into. Um, into the social uh, and and we have a YouTube channel where we put a lot of demos a lot of demos a lot of tips and tricks and and these are like short ones very feature specific videos that we record uh, and usually it's screencast with a with a person narrating it and uh, and those are great those are super valuable and 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 we get lots of views on those and then we have one home page video that um, uh, that we did spend some money to create, and and uh, and that one is not done with our product, of course, but using a professional. I'd just also like to add to that, if I may, is m my biggest tip with any of the video stuff is just get started, just do it, and don't expect to get it hundred percent right first time. Just start. Um, with all of my consultancy clients, that's the biggest thing that I, I have to get over is that. I, I, I'm, I'm too scared to do this in case I do it wrong. Well, you can't do it wrong. You'll either get views or you'll get data as to what you need to do next and practice in any case. So just start. Um, and one other, one other benefit, by the way, of this video that I, I've noticed myself is um, people will come to me and say, hey, I already know you. I saw you on this, on this webcast or this, uh, uh, or this video podcast that you were doing. So, so there's a, if you get your face out there often enough, uh, you become familiar, you become more trusted. No, it's a really great suggestion you gave. You know, just go out and try it out. Uh, there could not be anything wrong in it. So I think we all should do that and take that advice very seriously. Um, there's a question by Murli where he says, is there not a video fatigue setting in with so many, so much of junk also going around? Um, yes, don't produce junk. <laughs> And, and by junk, I don't mean production values. It's find out what your audience want and then produce it for them. So people are always looking for answers to questions. That's why I go back. Um, just answer the 10 or 12 biggest questions that your clients are asking you or prospects are asking you in a video. And then by the time they've listened to half of those, they'll already feel like they know you. Great. Uh so Nitin has another question, some ideal cases, some number of users, stability, uh, traction. Uh, Vikram, if you can just throw up on some uh, statistics. Um, yeah, so we have uh, maybe about 6,000 customers uh, using Pictory right now. And uh, um, the most common use cases are uh, that snippets, the video snippets that I showed you. So they, they'll take their webinar, create little snippets out of it. And, and they, they tell us all the time as to how much effort it was saving them. They were spending thousands of dollars every month with videographers that they didn't have to hire and they could do it themselves. The content teams could do it themselves. Um, and, uh, and then the second most common use cases where, where people will start from a script or an article and convert, create a video from it. Um, and, uh, uh, sometimes they'll use um, uh, machine voice, but more often the more interesting videos they actually narrate it themselves, um, and uh, and so those those two are are the use cases that I showed you as well, 
and uh, and the value that that uh, that our customers see is they they can let a lot more people create videos and edit videos uh, than it was possible before. They always had to find either outsourced resources or uh, stretch their already stretched uh, design team or videography team to, to do this stuff. Question by Praveen, is there any restriction on the video length? Uh, so on Pictory, like if you're starting from text, we limit it to 20 minute videos. Although I have to say, I have to be frank, I, I, it gets kind of slow and clunky at 20 minute videos. Uh, so so uh, on when you're starting from a blog, uh, or sorry, from a video itself, uh, we, we, we limit it to, I think, 90 minute videos. Uh, and uh, And so... So those are like a webinar, a 90 minute webinar is too long. Usually you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that, but we do provide a 90 minute limit. So I think the limits are listed on our website. I don't have the exact uh, recollection. Uh, There's a follow-up question by Murli uh, that you were talking about editing features. What about that? Yeah, so I sh when I showed you kind of how you can delete uh, segments from a video, uh, that was the editing I was talking about. So we can edit things out of the video very, very easily. You can delete sections, uh, sentence levels or at the word level and, and remove that. Um, obviously video editing is a lot more than just that, but, uh, but a lot of things that people wanna do is just that. It's, it's, it's just taking the, the very specific uh, things out of the video or just selecting those to uh, to do the things. And I think um, the whole point is in video editing, people had to think of timelines before. You always had to think of start timestamp and end timestamp. And uh, we are trying to kind of get away from that timestamp thinking and just uh, have you think in, instead in terms of the content of the video and using that to edit the thing. So so it doesn't work, it may not work for everything. If you have a music video, yes, you, you may not be able to edit it with Pictory. It, it has to be a spoken word video. Yeah, I think he wanted to know it's not timeline editing. Yes, it is not uh, a yeah. timeline. Editing. It's more on the text, the con. Uh, yeah. um, there's a question, let's take the last, I think the last few minutes. Uh, Adriya Mukherjee has, uh, when we watch a video on YouTube, and we are forced to watch a promotional video, we tend to focus more on the five seconds to get over so that we can skip it. Now, given this consumer behavior, how to keep the audience engaged in the first five seconds? I think you can give it. Yeah, I, th I think I understand the question. Um, it's really about how you structure the video. Most people um, on YouTube particularly uh, do everything wrong. They they start with five seconds of a spinning logo, then they start with a promotional message, and then they start with an introduction, and then they get to the content. If anybody watching this has studied NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, there's a technique called an NLP pattern interrupt, which in video terms means it's best to start um, at a uh, not necessarily at the beginning of what you want to say, but it's something that's going to grab their attention. Very quickly, uh, uh, um, an example, um, if I was doing a video about how to cook baby artichokes um, in, in the microwave, rather than introducing myself and saying, this is what I'm going to do in the video, I might, I might start the video with, so I put the baby in the microwave. Now, immediately, that's, <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? This guy's going to put a baby in the microwave. And then you would, you would, after that, then you'd say, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to cook baby artichokes in the microwave in less than five minutes. And if anybody was to tune out during the first few seconds of that video, then um, I think it says more about them than me. That's great. Right. Uh, any further questions? Uh... So uh, before we close, uh, Vikram and Pete, thank you so very much for taking the session for our members, our audience over here. This was really informative. Um, it's a very, very early morning for you, I think, Vikram and uh, Pete. This is an afternoon. So thank you so much uh, to be there with us. Thank you so much, audience, for staying connected and you know, asking all these questions. It has really helped us to get more insights and inputs on. 
uh, Vikram had shared uh, his connects contacts uh, in his presentation. Uh, if you require, we would be putting this presentation as well online. You could uh, uh, download it. Uh, the video also will be there for you to just revisit in case you want to just check about it. And of course, Vikram has been kind enough uh, for an offer for all of you. So please go ahead and do use uh, that offer and do try out Victory. Uh, with that, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Good morning, Vikram. Good afternoon, Pete. And good night, everyone. See you thank you. Uh, again. Thank you thank so you much. Thank, thank you.